It's time to build a new kind of deep sky astrophotography rig. One designed for galaxies. What do I mean by that? Galaxies tend to be a lot smaller than wide field nebulae targets, the ones I traditionally shoot through my wide field refractors. Galaxies are a lot smaller and require more magnification, more focal length, and in some cases, a different style of optical instrument to do justice. In this video, I'm going to put together a brand new deep sky astrophotography rig that was designed for capturing small distant galaxies. Celestron has sent me something very cool. Starazona has sent me something very cool. And unless you're brand new to astrophotography, I think you'll have an idea of where I'm going with this. Please let me know in the comments if you think I am too old to be wearing a backwards hat. It kind of feels like I am. I want to get this out of the way first too. No one's paid me to do this video, not sponsored, no promotional, anything. They have no idea. No company ever tells me what to say and what to tell you guys. Okay, let's get started. I pulled in a lot of heavy equipment from the garage and I'm going to set it up down here in the basement just so I can go over it with you guys and you can look at it in detail. The first thing is the Celestron CGXL mount. Do you remember that mount I talked about early last year? That's the mount I'm going to be using for this system because I do need a heavy payload capacity. And also it's not currently being used for anything. I think the idea is, and you know, I see a lot of astrophotographers do this. Chuck's astrophotography is one great example. He has dedicated separate rigs for different styles of astrophotography. The whole kit is built ready to go for those situations as opposed to disassembling the configuration and changing it up constantly. My God, the amount of times I have spent taking apart rigs and setting them back up. I'm hoping that this rig can stay together as a single unit in the garage so I simply have to pull the whole thing out. I'll have a rig that's ready for galaxy photography, for wide field nebula, for wide angle night sky shots, dedicated rigs for different styles of photography. Let's get this heavy monster CGXL set up right here so you can take a look at it. This has got to be the heaviest tripod on the planet. So if you didn't see my video early last year with this mount, it is the Celestron CGXL, an observatory class equatorial mount with computerized go-to. It has a 75 pound payload capacity and that's the main reason, one of two main reasons why I'm using this mount for my Galaxy rig. The telescope I'm going to be putting on here is about 30 pounds, which is pretty heavy as far as astrophotography telescopes go. I did have some great experiences with the CGXL over the summer. I mounted a big FLT-132 refractor on it, one of the heaviest refractors I have. I had great success with it. It tracked good. I love the Nexstar system. Through ASCOM, I was controlling it through my computer. I can tap into features like pulse guiding, plate solving, all that fun stuff. So. That's gonna come in handy when shooting galaxies at that high magnification. I did have that one fumble night where it just was acting up and I really think that I had a clutch loose or something in the video I made called uh, I Made a Mistake. That was the last time I used this mount, so I just hope it's ready to go by the time I get it outside. Okay, I need to put the counterweight on this before I attach the telescope. I haven't even taken it out of the box yet. I did look at a promotional video and you know looked at the specs of the telescope and everything, but other than that, the whole thing is a new experience for me. Telescopes always are so much bigger in person than they look in the pictures. This is the Celestron Edge HD 11 inch F10 Aplanatic Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope. It has a focal length of 2,800 millimeters. That is some serious magnification. What? are you doing down here? What? If you watch this channel, you'll know that a telescope like the Celestron Edge HD 11 is completely different from what I normally use. I'm more of a wide field refractor guy, fast F ratios, uh, short focal lengths, whereas this 2800 millimeter focal length at f10 is a completely 
different animal altogether. There's a lot to consider with a telescope like this, especially for someone like me that's kind of stuck in my old ways and what I, I know what I like. Shooting at 2800 millimeters focal length is super high magnification, so perfect for small galaxies. But with that comes a lot of potential headaches. The biggest one meaning that when you're at that magnification, all of a sudden your mount becomes so important. The guiding accuracy, tracking accuracy of the mount, if it, the payload capacity isn't high enough for a big heavy scope like this, you're gonna have issues. Seeing conditions come into play when you've got an aperture of 11 inches. There's so much that changes when you get into this realm of astrophotography telescopes. That being said, this telescope is actually quite versatile for an astrophotographer. It's kind of a, if you have one scope and you want to explore different areas, this is actually a pretty good one to use for that. Because let's say you shoot at the native focal length of 2,800 millimeters at F10, camera at the back here, you're maximizing that full magnification of the scope, get those small objects, or you could use a reducer to bring it down to F7. I know Starzona has a reducer for this telescope. Or you can go crazy and get Hyperstar, which attaches the camera to the front corrector plate of the SCT. And then you're shooting at F1.9 at around 500 millimeters. And it's, then it becomes basically an 11 inch RASA for lack of a better description, because then you're at wide field, super fast imaging. So it's kind of versatile and it lets you go in different directions. Not to mention, you could put an eyepiece and just use this telescope visually. That's something I haven't mentioned yet and something I have not explored on this channel is planetary imaging. So planetary, whether it's just visual views of the planets, high resolution views, it's a completely different style of imaging. And this is the kind of telescope you would use if you want close up views of the planets and the moon for that matter. The other really important thing that you have to keep in mind is which camera are you gonna be using with this telescope? Your image scale becomes very important. This is unlike all of the other optical systems that I use. Typically my refractors are from say, anywhere from 300 to 800 millimeters. That's fine for the image sensors on the cameras that I have. The ASI 294MC Pro, the 533, those are all a great fit in terms of image scale for those sensors and the focal length of the telescope. All of a sudden, the image scale changes drastically with a scope like this. And to be honest, the cameras that I currently use aren't such a great fit for this because they have such small pixels. You generally want larger pixels when you're shooting at this magnification. So what that could mean for you if you're shooting with, say it's a DSLR or some of the color CMOS cameras that you've seen me use on this channel, the images might look a little soft at that focal length. Even though you can sharpen them up in post-processing, it's just not gonna be the same. So it should be interesting to see if the images do look a little soft and if so, if it's kind of a deal breaker for me where I consider using a different camera for this system. All of these reasons start to add up and kind of make you realize why I tend to steer people in the road of a smaller refractor, at least in the beginning. Yes, this telescope is gonna be able to do things I've never done before, some pretty exciting ones like small galaxies and planets. I think as you see me use this system in the backyard, you're gonna see me squirm a little bit and go through some frustrations. I'll probably edit most of them out, to be honest. Here's a look at the objective of the Edge HD 11. This is an SCT telescope, but uh, the Edge version is a little bit different than say the traditional C8, C11 that Celestron does. This one has the Edge optics, which is said to flatten the field better. It's designed for astrophotography. So pinpoint stars to the edge of the field, even with a large imaging sensor, uh, like a DSL, a full frame DSLR, for example. Obviously for galaxies, I'll be using it with the camera attached to the back of the telescope to utilize that native 2,800 millimeter focal length. But also I'll try out the FASTAR system, which is uh, installing HyperStar, the camera on the front, with uh, another attachment so I can use this telescope at f1.9 and around 500 millimeters. So that's a lot of aperture, 11 inches of aperture. If you're unfamiliar with the Hyperstar system, it's something that a company called Starazona developed years ago and uh, people just love it. I remember the first time I heard about it, it was actually Dylan O'Donnell who was swore by it and I was like, that can't be real. There's no way you can turn an f10 scope into an f1.9. 
but it's real. So this is what the Hyperstar system looks like. Comes in this nice Pelican case. And oh, I see a filter drawer on the front there. I didn't notice that at first. That's great. Convenient spot for filters. So hi what Hyperstar does, basically, like I said, there's a glass lens elements here that converts the F10 scope into F1.9. Have no idea how they pull that off, but these things aren't cheap either. This end, you thread onto the front corrector plate of the SCT, and this end is where you thread your camera. And so it just sits on the front, and I'll attach it to the scope next. So this is how you put the Hyperstar V4 on the Edge HD11, and this whole process kind of freaks me out, to be honest. But this locking ring comes off here, and then you just slide out the secondary mirror. Get a little grip here to pull it which is kind of cool to just pull out the mirror like that. Look at the thickness of it. So secondary mirror is out. Now I can thread the Hyperstar V4 right on the front very carefully. Okay, found the thread. It's gonna add a lot of weight to the front of the scope as you can imagine, especially when the camera's on here too. Now that's one good thing I didn't mention about this 11 inch aperture. It's actually better, you can use a DSLR body or mirrorless for that matter, like the RA, right at the back and you're actually still have lots of, you're not covering as much of the objective of say an eight inch version. Okay, so there it is there. And uh, I'm sure I could tighten things down with the screws on the front and I'll have to look into that. But essentially the camera screws on to, caught on the first bounce. I'm planning on using the ZWO ASI 533 with this system for better or for worse. I don't know if it's a great fit or not, but it should look a little something like this. Here we go. So this is gonna be what the camera looks like at the, at the front there. This is the Hyperstar system in action on the Edge HD 11. And uh, so this is, as I said, shooting at F1.9, uh, about 500 millimeters with this system. I'll try it in this configuration. I'll try it in the traditional camera at the back configuration, which involves it threading on the back here, the rear cell for the, the galaxy type photography. But I just wanted to, you to see what it looks like in the Hyperstar configuration. I'm so excited to explore this new territory of astrophotography. I felt that it was important to bring you guys along for this ride. This is gonna be used for galaxy season. So probably won't be busting this out until it gets a little bit warmer, maybe in the end of February, March. Then you'll see this in action, but I wanted you to see this system as it is right now.